I have heard that. On one occasion. The Blessed One was staying at Savathi in the Eastern Monastery, the palace of Megara's mother, together with many well-known elder disciples. With Venerable Sariputta, Venerable Maha. Mogilarna. Venerable Maha Kasapar, Maha Kakayana. Maha Kathita, Maha Kapina. Maha Kunda, Venerable Rivada. Venerable Ananda and other well-known elder disciple. On that occasion, the elder bhikkhu, were teaching and instructing. Some elder bhikkhu, were teaching and instructing ten bhikkhu. Some, were teaching and instructing twenty bhikkhu, some were teaching and instructing thirty bhikkhu. Some were teaching and instructing forty bhikkhu, the new bhikkhu, being taught and instructed by the elder bhikkhu, were successively discriminating significant distinctions. Now on that occasion, the Upur Sarthar day of the 15th, the full moon night of the Parvararna ceremony, the Blessed One was seated in the open air surrounded by the community of bhikkhu. Surveying the silent community of bhikkhu, he addressed them, Bhikkhu. I am content with this practice. I am really content in mind with this exercise. So arouse even more intense persistence for the attaining of the as yet unattained, the reaching of the as yet unreached, and the realization of the as yet unrealized. I will remain right here at Savatthi for another month through the white water lily month the fourth month of the rains. The bhikkhu, in the countryside heard on what they said. The blessed one will remain right there at Savathi through the white water lily month, the fourth month of the rains. So, they left for Savathi to see the blessed one. Then, the elder bhikkhu, taught and instructed even more intensely. Some elder bhikkhu were teaching and instructing ten bhikkhu. Some were teaching and instructing twenty bhikkhu. Some, were teaching and instructing thirty bhikkhu, some were teaching and instructing forty bhikkhu. The new bhikkhu, being taught and instructed by the elder bhikkhu, were discerning even higher successive distinctions. Now on that occasion, the Upur Sarthar day of the 15th, the full moon night of the white water lily month, the fourth month of the rains. The blessed one was seated in the open air surrounded by the community of Bhikkhu. Surveying the silent community of Bhikkhu. He addressed them. Bhikkhu. This assembly is free from idle chatter, devoid of empty babble, and is established on pure heart wood. Such is this community of Bhikkhu, such is this assembly. The sort of assembly that is worthy of gifts, worthy of hospitality, worthy of offerings, worthy of respect, an incomparable field of merit for the world. Such is this community of bhikkhu, such is this assembly.
the sort of assembly to which a small gift, when given, become great, and a great gift, become the great thar. Such is this community of bhikkhu, such is this assembly. The sort of assembly that it is rare to see in the world, such is this community of bhikkhu, such is this assembly. The sort of assembly that it would be worth traveling for leagues, taking a long provisions, in order to see. In this community of bhikkhu, there are bhikkhu, who are arahants, whose mental fermentations are ended, who have reached fulfillment, done the task, laid down the burden, attained the true goal, totally destroyed the fetter of becoming, and who are released through right gnosis. Such are the bhikkhu in this community of bhikkhu. In this community of bhikkhu, there are bhikkhu, who with the total inning of the first set of five fetters are due to be reborn in the pure boats. There, to be totally unbound, never again to return from that world, such are the bhikkhu in this community of bhikkhu. In this community of bhikkhu, there are bhikkhu, who with the total inning of the first three fetters, and with the attenuation of passion, aversion, and delusion, are once returners, who on returning only one more time to this world, will make an inning to pain, such are the bhikkhu. In this community of bhikkhu, In this community of bhikkhu, there are bhikkhu, who with the total inning of the first three fetters, are stream winners, steadfast, never again destined for states of woe, headed for self-awakening. Such are the bhikkhu. In this community of bhikkhu, in this community of bhikkhu, there are bhikkhu, who remain devoted to the development of the four frames of reference, the four right exertions, the four sources of force, the five abilities, the five powers, the seven factors of awakening, the noble eightfold way, such are the bhikkhu, in this community of bhikkhu. In this community of bhikkhu, there are bhikkhu, who remain devoted to the development of goodwill, understanding, joy, equanimity, disgust of the body, the perception of impermanence, such are the bhikkhu. In this community of bhikkhu, in this community of bhikkhu, there are bhikkhu, who remain devoted to mindfulness by in and out breathing, Mindfulness of in and out breathing, when developed and practiced, is of great fruit, of great advantage. Mindfulness of in and out breathing, when developed and practiced, brings the four frames of reference to their culmination. The four frames of reference when developed and practiced, bring the seven factors of awakening to their culmination. And, the seven factors of awakening, when developed and practiced, bring clear knowing, and release to their culmination. Now, how is mindfulness of in and out breathing developed and practiced, so as to bring the four frames of reference to their culmination? 
There is the case, where a bhikkhu having gone to the wilderness, to the shade of a tree, or to an empty building, sits down folding his legs crosswise, holding his body erect, and setting mindfulness up in front. Always mindful, he breathes in. Mindful, he breathes out. Inhaling long he notes that, he is inhaling long. And, exhaling long, he notes that he is exhaling lungs. Inhaling short, he notes that, he is inhaling short. And, exhaling short, he notes that, he is exhaling short. He trains himself to inhale experiencing the entire body and to exhale sensitive to the entire body. He trains himself to inhale calming the bodily processes and to exhale calming the bodily construction. He trains himself to inhale perceptive of mental joy and to exhale experiencing two mental joys. He trains himself to inhale receptive of bodily pleasure and to exhale experiencing bodily pleasure. He trains himself to inhale sensitive to mental construction and to exhale experiencing mental construction. He trains himself to inhale calming mental construction and to exhale calming mental constructions. He trains himself to inhale perceiving the mind and to exhale experiencing the mind. He trains himself to inhale gladdening the mind and to exhale satisfying the minds. He trains himself to breath in focusing the mind and to breath out concentrating the mind. He trains himself to breath in releasing the mind and to breath out liberating the mind. He trains himself to inhale, focusing on impermanence and to exhale reflecting on inconstancy. He trains himself to breath in reflecting on this interest and to breath out reflecting on this illusion. He trains himself to inhale reflecting on stopping and to exhale reflecting on ending. He trains himself to breath in reflecting on relinquishment and to breath out reflecting on relinquishment. <laughs>